now that we have a more or less functioning inventory, let's take a step back and do something slightly simpler to really reiterate all of the techniques that we've talked about in the last couple of videos. And then after that, we're going to be moving on to some more interesting stuff with chests and shops again. But for today, we're going to be talking about how a character can drop items from their inventory back into the world. Because at the moment, what we can do in the game is we can pick up items with this uh, line tracer over here, but we can't then drop them back out of our inventory again. Also, I'm going to be anchoring this to the left side of the screen rather than the center, so it actually stays uh, in my uh, view properly. I also made the inventory a little bit smaller and uh, thinner, just to have it look a little bit better. So let's get started on our widget that we can use to make things drop. Let's come into the inventory here, and we're just going to make a new widget blueprint here. So we'll just make a new simple user widget. And we'll call this widget blueprint drop item. Let's get started here with, uh, we're just going to use a size box for now, uh, because that allows us to very easily set the actual size that we want, uh, which in this case will be the same as our inventory slots, I imagine. Maybe a little bit bigger. Let's make this 150 by 150. And then for reference purposes, we're going to put this uh, as desired on screen, so we can actually see how big things are. And in that size box, we'll just simply put an image, and we don't really need to do anything more with it, to be honest with you. And I had ChatGPT generate me a arrow image, which again, much like all the other images here, is kind of bad, but it'll do the trick for now. Then we go into the graph view, and obviously we overwrite the same function that we did on the inventory slots themselves, that is on drop, because we're still working with drag and drop operations here. It doesn't really matter whether or not it is the uh, left or the right mouse button that we have here, the only thing that we really care about is the operation, which we need to cast to our drag drop operation that we've made in previous parts. With that, we can first and foremost delete the item out of the inventory, and then we can spawn it into the world. So let's go back into the inventory component here, which still is a little bit of a mess, don't mind that. And we'll just simply make a new function here uh, that clears out an inventory slot. I think that will just be the easiest thing to do. So we can make a function clear inventory slots, and this will just very simply um, take our array, set an array element of a certain index to be an entirely empty inventory slot, uh, but it will still have the proper index. And of course, as with everything, we want to uh, call on inventory changed. Now, the drop item. Now, the drop item blueprint is going to need a reference to the player inventory components. And since we're not going to be using this in things like the... And since we don't really need to use this in context of a enemy or a merchant inventory or whatever, because you're not allowed to be able to drop the things in those inventories into the world, right? That would be just stealing their inventory. Only really relevant to player inventory. We don't need to do anything uh, too drastic about this. We can simply just get the player character and we can uh, get the inventory from that with the blueprint interface that we set up previously. And we could promote that to a variable, but we're only going to be using this uh, right here for this one thing, so we don't really need to. Uh, and we can clear the inventory slot like that. And the way we can figure out which inventory slot we want to clear is we can uh, get our inventory stack, split that structure pin, and get the index that we want to clear. And now we'll have a button where if we hover over it in our inventory, it will clear out that inventory slot. But this is just a deletion button. This, this is not a dropping button. Well, first and foremost, uh, if we copy over this code into a separate blueprint, which will just delete something, um, that actually works out perfectly fine. So if you want to also have like a, a recycling bin in your inventory where you can just delete items uh, out of existence, this is simply the way we do that. And we might also make that in a second just to have a more complete inventory. Uh, but again, we don't really care about doing all that at the moment. What we want to do is we want to actually uh, spawn an actor from class, and we're going to go all the way back to early on in this series uh, where we made the world item actor. 
which allows us to spawn in Actos into the world. And we want to figure out which item we want to spawn in and how much of that item. And wouldn't you know it, we have that information right here. So we actually want to do that before clearing the inventory slot for what I assume are obvious reasons. Because if we clear out the inventory slot, then the data we'll be reading from whatever inventory uh, slot that we're dragging away uh, is now empty. So we want to spawn it in and then clear it out. So we just drag in the item data asset to the item data asset and the stack size to the stack size. Now for the world transform, uh, we're going to split this one up. The scale will just be 1, 1, 1. Uh, the spawn rotation can be 0, 0, 0. I don't really care about that. For the location, we'll get actor location from the player character. Get actor lo location and to that we're also going to add the get actor forward vector which will multiply by something like i don't know 200 to have it spawn slightly in front of us when we drop it otherwise it's going to drop on our head and that's not really what we want so let's convert this spin into a float and multiply this by about 200 and then add that to our current actor location. And that's going to be the place where this spawns into the world. All right, and that's really all there is to that. So let's go back into our player inventory, which again, I have uh, changed up a little bit. And in our canvas panel, we will add a drop item widget, which we can just put in like this. And we'll anchor that to the bottom left. So let's test this out. We can collect a couple of rocks here. That's all fine. Let's also collect the sword because why not? We have it in our inventory. We can drag it into our drop button over here and then it spawns it into the world, clearing out the inventory slot. Now the real test is, does it have two rocks inside of it? One, two, and it's back in our inventory. We can drop the sword and it works much the same way. So we can also drop items. As a little bonus here, because this is a pretty quick and light episode, we're also going to uh, actually do something that I wanted to do quite a while ago, and that is make this thing have a border when we're hovering over it, just to make things look a little bit better. So we'll go into the item slot into the event graph, and we'll actually uh, select the button that we've added. You might have been wondering, we haven't been using this button at all. Why is this even relevant? And that is because... The button just gives us an easy way to see when something is selected or something is hovered over. And that's what we're going to be using here. Uh, it's entirely a stylistic thing. So let's say when we are uh, hovering over it, we will take our uh, border image here and we will set brush from texture. And we can just select our new texture there. But before we do that, we want to also go back into the button here and say on unhovered because we also want to set this back to the original image when we're no longer hovering over it so let's set the unhovered version to our uh border image or whatever we call it inventory slot and really quickly in photoshop i'm just going to add a quick stroke outline around it uh, it's going to be a little bit bigger than that and let's make it a nice thick color like uh like yellow maybe even a little bit brighter and something like that should work just fine so now we have this outline selected version which we can choose and we'll see now as we mouse over this we highlight the inventory slot that we're currently selecting now let's also uh duplicate the drop item into a uh, delete item and here we're simply going to go into the uh, graph and on drop, what we're going to do is we'll just uh, get rid of the spawn actor stuff and only clear out the inventory slots. Which does bring me to one last thing that I want to talk about right now, today. Because if we add this, we can say, okay, delete item, that's all nice. Uh, we want to definitely give this a different image, which I also had ChatGPT generate a garbage bin for me. And to make this also work with the uh, controller inputs or just like keyboard inputs or whatever, if you're not using a mouse, uh, what you can do is you can also add the event on focus, um, add it to focus path. 
So that is event on added to focus path for the set brush selected. And then um, event on removed from focus path for the normal brush again. This way, when a inventory slot is selected as being active, it will have that highlight around it as well, even if you're not hovering over it. So I'll show you that real quick. I change the key binds to open the inventory with I. And if I just select something here and I uh, make this the active window, I can tab all throughout it. It still has the blue outline around it. That would also show that this is currently the selected slot, but we also have our own yellow outline on it now. So that's neat. And if you do this with uh, the arrow keys, it also works fully well and so forth and so on. Same with if you have controller bindings for this, you can now navigate this with the controller fairly easily. Of course, you would also need to set up some drag and drop functionality for your controller, which we haven't done here, but that is kind of the same as we have done. But instead of using mouse events, you would be using key input events instead. And one last thing that I want to show is uh, in general, if you do like a left click operation and you let go of it uh, anywhere in the screen that doesn't have any like on drop functionality, so anywhere at all, uh, nothing happens. But since we already remove the split stack at the moment we start splitting them, if I cancel this operation by trying to drop it somewhere that it doesn't have a drop location, uh, it doesn't add them back into the original slot either. That is something that we didn't cover in the stack split video. And since this video is just a little bit of adding things and polishing things up, uh, let's do that here as well. So in our item slot over here, we can also uh, come into the functions and we can see uh, when. As a quick correction on a part of the video that I don't know how I'm going to cut this yet. Uh, but what I did in the original recording of this video uh, for this section is in the item slot. I made this little function over here, which was supposed to prevent uh, splitting stacks and then deleting items accidentally when dropping it outside of a window. And that didn't end up working out too well. So instead, what I ended up doing, and I'm just going to go through this um, after the fact, I made in the event graph for the item slot, the wait for drop event. And all that that does is it binds to the on drag cancelled on a drag and drop operation. So the parameter here is a drag and drop operation. Uh, I'll just call this DDO. Then on drag detected, if that is a right click drag, what that will do is it will pass through that drag drop operation to wait for drop. And this will then fire and then that means that whenever we cancel a drop, so whenever our drop ends, uh, this new custom event will now fire, which will, of course, uh, cast to our custom drag drop inventory slot thing that we made, uh, in which I have made a new variable for success, just a boolean, that will test whether or not we successfully dragged and dropped into another inventory slot. If we didn't drag something into an inventory slot, this will stay false, and that way we can check whether or not we should restore things to their original slot or not. So here we check whether or not uh, this is a success, and if this is not a success, meaning that we release the button outside of any relevant window, uh, what it will do is it will take the inventory components that we took that from, and on that run the add item to stack, and since we are just passing through our drag and drop operation, much like we do in all of the other code, in this system, we can simply get the stack that we were trying to add to something and add it back to where it came from. And then I unbind that event again until the next time around when we do a drag and drop. Then in the on drop function we have here, uh, all of the paths end up leading to uh, setting the drag drop operation that we get and pass through uh, to setting the success value to being uh, true. Also, what we should probably do is in the uh, drop item operation and the delete item operation, we also need to go in and uh, set the success value to being true. I had not done that yet. I just wanted to jump in and record this little correction right away because I'm going to be editing this video soon and I wanted it to be in there. 
So again, in the delete item, we will also jump in on drop. We will make sure that we set success to being true. This is just a value that we can now look at when we finish a dropping operation to see whether or not we actually dropped it into some kind of other UI element or if we let go of it in the middle of nowhere, in which case we need to uh, reset it. Once again, this is entirely because... Uh, I'll just pick up a couple of items. This is entirely because of the way that I decided that when dragging and dropping with right-click and splitting the stacks, I immediately want the number on the bottom right here to update on the old stack, meaning that I already am deleting items out of it. Uh, if you don't want that, none of this really is an issue, because if I try to do this with a left-click, uh, it simply doesn't do anything when I drag it out of it. Uh, but now, when I do this with a right click, it also restores it to the slot that it came from. So that's very, very good. Because we're clearing the inventory slot from the index, uh, what we should be doing, we should only be clearing the inventory slot if it's a left click operation, uh, which is kind of annoying to deal with. So um, it's not that big a deal though, because we can of course get the affecting button and we can check if the affecting button is a left click in which case clear inventory and otherwise do not clear that inventory stop because we've already subtracted what we needed to subtract. So this is a little bit of a messy video altogether, I am aware. Uh, let's also do that in the delete item while we're at it. And also make sure that the success value here is set to true. Uh, but every so often you just need to go over your code and test things out and refactor some things and make sure everything works. So I kind of guess that this episode reflects that part of coding as well so again uh, get the affecting button check whether or not that is equal to a left click in which case do the clear inventory for right click don't do that and we still want to probably hook this up onto the return node uh, just to be sure and we set that to true i don't really think it matters to be honest with you at least not for our purposes, but we might as well. So now we should be able to delete half a stack without deleting the original stack there. And the same with this, we should be able to drop half the stack without it deleting the original index as well. So everything works now. And once again, I can uh, drop things outside of this window and they will just return to where they came from. A little bit of a extra update uh, at the end here after I recorded the initial bit and I was working on tidying some things up and I figured out a couple of bugs that I needed to fix still. So hopefully this helps and isn't too confusing added on to the end of the video here. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course plus a little bonus episode where we go over and change some things to make some alternative ways to interact with the inventory, which will be a Patreon-exclusive episode. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 